public policies for the bioeconomy. Um, I'll do a little bit of introduction to this. My, I'm, I'm Jim Philp from the OECD. I have uh, remits on synthetic biology, bioeconomy generally, industrial biotechnology. Um, and when we talk coherence, um, let, I, when I was thinking about this, I just listed down a few of the, the policies which I, which I come across day and daily. So now we have a fairly large number of national and international and regional bioeconomy strategies. There were two major ones, from one from the EU and from one from the United States, within a few months of each other in 2012. And now we have a large number of these uh, bioeconomy strategies. But then and uh, I've noticed um, at least two synthetic biology roadmaps, of which in synthetic biology is written into many of the yeah, bioeconomy strategies. Uh, the EU, I have seen three industrial biotechnology roadmaps. Germany has its biorefinery roadmap. Uh, we have the biomass utilization plans. And we had just heard earlier in SCAR that the need for a biomass strategy. And above all this in the OECD, I have the Korean Green Growth Strategy. And they all seem to interact with each other and they're all kind of important to the future of each other. And one of my main worries has been about this issue of coherence and, and more specifically about uh, conflicts between different public policies, which we, don't, we, we want to try and avoid that because all of this ultimately interacts with agriculture. And there are plenty of people in this room would already say that agricultural policy in, in the European Union is complicated and contradictory enough. So there is lots of room for conflict here and, and contradiction and all these different policies that are coming out. Um, add to that, one thing else that SCAR was talking about was a regulatory conflict. We have the, like waste regulations, uh, set-aside policies. So um, the best place to start, though, is the direct bioeconomy strategies of different countries. And we're fortunate enough here to have uh, the bioeconomy strategies being reviewed from two different countries. They were chosen for very different reasons, very different economies. Uh, one in the, from South Africa and one from Finland. So different population sizes, different climate, different drivers, and, and therefore it would be nice to see here how the two kind of compare and contrast. So um, I'm not going to give big introductions to speakers about what they've done in the past and who they are. Um, I'm simply... Uh, it's going to be about the, the relationship I have with those people already, if I have them. Our first speaker up will be Blanche Ting, formerly a, a South African government and had a, a deep responsibility in producing the South African uh, bio, is a, a bioeconomy strategy. And um, she was uh, one of the delegates to the OECD. So we had some interaction on that. And the second speaker is, uh, from, is Sixten here from, uh, from Finland. And this, if I'm correct, this is a, almost a brand new bio, uh, 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 bioeconomy strategy. So they're both kind of new, but uh, without getting further into this, I'll invite uh, Blanche to give us 20 minutes or so on the South, South African bioeconomy strategy. Blanche, the floor is yours. Thank you, Jim. Good afternoon, everyone. So as Jim has alluded to, I'll be talking about the bioeconomy strategy that's in South Africa. Um, so just to give you a bit of context, this uh, strategy was launched in January 2014, and we've been working on it for about three, four years. And since the launch in January, we're now working on our implementation plans. Okay, so just the outline of my presentation, I'll give you a bit of context to how the strategy came about. I think I'll allude to the drivers, as what Jim was saying. Um, also to give you a bit of an overview of our landscape in South Africa. And then we've narrowed it down to about three thematic areas of focus in our bioeconomy. And this is relative to our drivers. Then I'll just give you a quick overview of the set of indicators that we've, we've had uh, proposed, and then a way forward. So just to give you a bit of context, in South Africa at the moment, this is what we call the gross expenditure of research and development as a percentage of, of GDP. It's, it's stagnating a bit, which is about 0 0.76 at the moment. And this is part of the things that we want to increase as part of the strategy. So this was just to give you an um, overview. Um, I think the uh, developed countries are 
are leaning towards about three or four percent. And you, you can really see a comparison when it comes to developing countries that we are really lagging behind. But we do have ambitions to go about 1.5 percent by 2020. Okay, so this is just to give you an overview of our policy. Um, it starts here in, in 1996. We have what we call the Science and Technology White Paper in 1996. And subsequent to that, um, that paper really um, envisioned science and technology to be very important for economic growth. And subsequent to that, we, we then launched our national biotech strategy in 2001. And then there were other things like the research and development and strategy in 2002. And I think a significant change in 2003 was the creation of the ministry. So before that, we had the Ministry of Science and Technology, Word Arts and Culture. And because of, of the subsequent, um, all of these policies led up to our own ministry. So we had a creation of a separate ministry, the Ministry of Science. So we're about 10 years old, basically. From there, there's a lot of um, specific strategy that followed after that. Um, the OECD review in 2007 of South Africa was really important for us because it identified the fact that our systems of innovation have this, what they call a fragmentation of instruments, as well as what they keep saying about uh, the chasm, research and development towards industry. We still need to fill that gap. And these are some of the drivers that we, we're starting to think about when it comes to implementation of our strategy. And then um, in 2008, we had another significant um, publication, what they call the 10-year innovation plan, 2008, where we identified five or four grand challenges. One of them was the bioeconomy. So in 2008, we already started thinking about um, not only replacing the national biotech, but going much, much bigger, which is the bioeconomy. And then, so a lot of things happened since then. Um, 2009, we have different agencies that we had to establish. One of them was what they call the TIA, which is the Technology Innovation Agency. We also have Intellectual Property Management Office. A lot of these things started um, being established. And I think what Jim was saying is how do we coordinate all of these instruments? So there's agencies that have been established and there's instruments, there's a lot of different things um, happening, but we need to be able to coordinate them in a way that can be coherent if we're going to implement our strategy. Mm -hmm. So this is the new strategy that I was talking about in 2014. This was launched in January. Okay, and just to reiterate again, this is now more specific to biotech. So in 2002, we had the biotech strategy. We did have what we call the biotech regional innovation centers in South Africa in 2003. But this has now subsequently been absorbed into what they call the TIA, the Technology Innovation Agency, primarily to address that um, fragmentation. So it was all now into one institution. Um, this um, indicates that we have the 5% of GDP. Where we're looking at that if that's ambitious or not. So we're still kind of discussing that. Um, so I think this is an important slide. So this is just to give you an idea of, of the, the landscape we have in South Africa. So for this bioeconomy strategy, we're very much focusing on the entire value chain. So not only in terms of just commercialization, but we're looking at basic applied technology development and commercial. So we want to address the entire value chain. But of course, we need to understand where are the gaps in that value chain and how can we make it more coherent. So I think it's very important to understand you know, which actors are playing and, and what role they have in the, in the value chain. So these are the maps that we have. For example, universities tend to focus more on basic research. Um, and then we have science councils in South Africa. We have quite a lot of them, which is the Water Research Council, Medical Research, um, we also have Agriculture Research Center, Human, human Science. So there's, there's a lot of them. Um, in terms of industry, we, we see them more here on the latter end of the value chain. And um, these things are what we call instruments. And if we need to implement policies, we need instruments in place. So for example, we have a very successful um, South African research chairs. So we try and retain um, really well-known professors. And we um, fund them for about five years, 10 years, I think. Um, this instrument is what we call the Center of, Ex of Excellence, which is really a partnership between a science council and a university. 
And then this one is what we call the centers of competence, the COCs, and this straddles between applied and technology development. So this is really starting to now bring all the research and towards development, and hopefully it will be um, here. It will have an effect towards uh, technology development and products and commercialization, which we hope will have an impact on the economy. This one, as you know, I think this um, actually addresses the entire value chain. As you're probably aware, the intellectual property is very important when it comes to a bioeconomy. And then the funding agencies for now we have is the National Research Fund, which really looks at uh, bursaries, trying to increase PhDs and master's students, um, postgrads, undergrads as well. And then this is the, the DST, and then this is what we have, we call the Industrial Development Corporation, which is really funding things towards more commercialization products. Um, I can talk about it later. Okay, um, Okay. so the key features of the national um, system, this bioeconomy, as you probably, um, well, from our um, perspective, it was, it's really highly complex system. There's, there's a lot of things we had to address, multiple role players, a lot of value chains, service providers. It's also highly regulated. And also no single outcome as well. So we had a lot of things to think about. You know, Do we have industry, health, agriculture? There's a lot of goods and services that we had to think about, as well as the fact that we have a very limited local market and highly competitive globally as well. In South Africa, we also don't have large biotech companies that can absorb our research and development. So these are some of the things that we had to think about if we, when we come to implementation. Okay, so um, I thought this was quite important because from South Africa and because we're a developing country, we also have to look at the impact of this policy in, in a healthy, this is what we call the national priorities. For example, we have a huge health burden in South Africa. So the, this policy, the bioeconomy had to address in terms of the biotech, for example, HIV and AIDS, but also cardiovascular diseases is, is is starting to increase also diabetes. So these are some of the things we have to also have an impact on. Um, industrial competitiveness, this really looks at the green economy, you know, the bio-based economy. Um, a big component of this policy is really human capital development. So we obviously have to grow our workforce. You know, it has to be a, a skilled and capable workforce. So human capital development is a, is a big component. There's also rural developments, which probably looks at the agriculture so this touches on, on the agriculture and rural development policies. And of course, we have to look at our environmental sustainability. Okay, so now in the next three slides, I'll just briefly mention to you of the three thematic areas that we've identified. So the first one is health, and the second one is agriculture, and the third one is industry. So as I alluded to earlier, the health really component is to address you know, the development objectives we have in the country, which we have a high um, burden of diseases. So we're trying to strengthen the country's local research development and innovation capabilities, really looking at um, pharmaceutical ingredients, vaccines, biopharmaceuticals, diagnostics, and medical devices. So this is just an overview of, of the, um, the strategy is actually available online. Um, I'll just forward it to you. So it goes into much detail here, but this is just to give you a summary. Um, and then the second thematic area of our focus is agriculture. So a big component is food security. Um, we've got a problem in terms of nutrition. So we're hoping this uh, policy can be enable research and development in these areas. There's also um, uh, a big component is expansion and intensification of sustainable agriculture production and processing. So some of the projects we're looking at is livestock improvement, agro-processing, um, agriculture is starting to really um, play an important role. Um, of course, biocontrols and biofertilizers, 40% um, of the uh, water use in, in South Africa is goes to agriculture, and we lose a lot of water. It's very important for us because we're a water-scarce country. Um, then the third uh, slide and third thematic area was industry and environment. So this really looks at the contribution of biotech to the green economy, as well as environmental sustainability. Um, so this is just to give you an overview of the industrial section of the bioeconomy. Um, so there's two components. There's industrial application and sustainable environmental management. So the, on the industrial side, we're looking at chemicals, materials, and energy. 
And on the environmental side, water and waste, we've got a big waste legacy in, in South Africa from the mines. So these are some of the things we have to look at. But also water, because as I said, we're a water-scarce country and we need to look at um, water technologies, well, biological applications that can um, look at the water research. And enabling technologies which are really important, for example, these are just examples, biocatalysis, uh, synthetic biology, functional genomics, and, and bioinformatics. Okay, so after January 2014, since we launched, um, there's now a lot of work that needs to be um, done in terms of implementation. Uh, implementation plans are actually really uh, as difficult as writing a policy because we have to really um, be coherent. And so the three areas that we're starting, this is still, you know, we're still, uh, we're still um, very much busy in trying to, to complete this. But the, we've grouped it into three areas. First one is very important, and it keeps coming up in terms of policies, is coordinated leadership. But there's a lot of things that need to be done, and coordination is, is key. Okay, um, innovation programs and strategic competencies. I'll just go briefly into that. So in terms of coordinated uh, leadership, um, this is a, a national strategy. It's not just our department, it's entire, um, uh, it's, entire country, so we have to look at coordination, alignment between different role players, it's not just within government, but industry as well, because we want them to take a role in this. So we've um, started uh, establishing a coordinated committees. So in that value chain that I mentioned earlier, we're trying to get all the different role players in that value chain. So from science councils, academia, government and industry are all part of this committee. And we're asking them to um, guide us in the implementation plan. Um, I think alignment as well is very important and reviewing roles and players. So who does what and where in the value chain? Because I think that's really important. Um, then the second component is strategic innovation programs. So as I said earlier, it's not just about commercialization or goods. It has to also be a development aspect. So it's strategic innovation programs. So these are very uh, focused um, areas that we have to focus on. HIV and AIDS, TB, malaria, diabetes, these are very important things to us. Um, crop improvement as well. Um, there's also a big component in terms of indi um, indigenous knowledge systems, IKS, which will enable us to find, um, you know, be able to enhance the, uh, the indigenous knowledge systems that we have. Um, we also want to look at revitalization of some industries. For example, we have a, sh a sugar cane industry in South Africa that's stagnating, and they, they're starting to realize that sugar is sugar cane is not competitive, so they have to branch on to other things. But I mean, the industry is a quite conservative, so you have to be also be able to address to them that you know this bio-based economy is much broader than just a single product. Um, then the the last one is the strategic. Our, DNA, our research development innovation competencies. So this is also a lot of things that we're looking at. These are just some of the things. For example, biodesign, which is um, functional genomics and synthetic biology combined. Technology services, uh, pilot scale and demonstration, we are looking at those things because obviously when it comes to industry, you have to scale up. Scale is, is very important. You can't just um, take things from the lab and expect them to be uh, feasible in, 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 in pilot scale. So we, that's very important. So infrastructure is, is really key. Um, entrepreneurial skills, yeah, this is something that we found out that the scientists that we have are not necessarily have the skills for, for entrepreneurs. So these are some of the things we want to start um, building programs in that. And biosafety, we also have um, an agency in South Africa called the Public Understanding of Biotech. So this talks to the um, society, and uh, uh, very important is communication to give them an idea of what is, you know, what is biotech. A lot of people don't really understand what it is. Um, so this is just some of the ideas we have for indicators. It's not finalized. Um, we need to understand, because bioeconomy cuts across many different parts of the economy, so we have to identify how we're going to measure this progress. Once we implement, we need to know if we're successful or not if we're reaching our goals, so we need to understand how we're going to measure our progress. Human capital development, as I keep saying, is, is very important. Um, and there's the commercialization, coordination. Um, this talks about technology um, balance of payments, so a lot of the um, 
for example, the ARVs uh, to produce the, for the HIV and AIDS, a lot of those products we're importing. So it's causing a lot of our trade deficits. So it's something that we, we think about. We need to be able to reduce um, dependency of imports when it comes to actively pharmaceutical ingredients. Um, so yeah, this is just some, it's just to give you an overview. This is still, still new. I mean, we're still trying to debate how we're going to measure the indicators because, you know, it's, it's, it's not an easy, it's not an easy thing to measure if it cu cuts across many different sectors of the economy. Um, so what, what's next? We're, we're starting to think about things like venture capital funds for, for um, our framework for our bioinnovation. We're also trying to set up a website that's going to look what we call a bioportal, but it's really just to see if we're going to be funding things, what are we funding and who's got that funding? Because obviously sometimes you have duplication. So some academics will apply for some things and apply for another thing. So we don't want to duplicate efforts. It's a small country and we don't have much money going around, so we need to know who's doing what with, and you know, what they've achieved. Um, and I said infrastructure is a big thing, so we're coming up with a roadmap for infrastructure. What's the infrastructure that we're going to need for implementation? And then um, establish vaccines and biologics man manufacturing in South Africa. We're also looking at preclinical work um, for those diseases. Um, then technology commercialization, yes, is some of the things, and coordination, as, as, as I keep saying. Um, yeah, so in terms of my, my last slide in conclusion, the policy really emanated from 2001, 2002, biotech strategy, and now it's, it's what we call bioeconomy. And the emphasis really is on the socioeconomic impact in the value chain. So filling in the value chain, the gaps in the value chain. And as I said, the three thematic areas is um, agriculture, industry, and health. And coordination, those are the three uh, key areas in terms of implementation. And yeah, the way forward is there's lots of things. We have only launched January and we still, we want to be able to finalize an implementation plan. Just taking, it's, it's quite a challenge. Um, that's about it, thank you. I wonder if um, we, uh, we can have the uh, open discussion later, but maybe there's time right now for any, just anything of clarification, a question of clarification from anyone, or we can otherwise defer till after the second speaker. If not, we'll, uh, I'll introduce the next speaker, Sixten Sunobaka from the Finnish Ministry of Employment and Economy. And like I said earlier, this is, uh, this is brand new in econ uh, bioeconomy strategies. And uh, here we have a, a totally different economy, one which is uh, well versed with high tech, but also one which is loaded with trees and biomass. And um, to my knowledge, is uh, trading on having perhaps the most advanced bioeconomy in the world in, in the north of the country that is uh, wood to ethanol biorefinery. So this is a long awaited um, bioeconomy strategy. Sixth in the, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you, James. And I also want to thank the organizer of this conference for having the opportunity to, to give you a short presentation on the Finnish bioeconomy strategy. We had have had a lot of strategies in the forest sector before, and we have also had a report on the status of, of our bioeconomy bio from uh, 2010, and this included also an action plan. But you can say that this is, uh, this is the first, uh, di this kind of uh, strategy we have on, on bioeconomy. And this uh, strategy was launched in May this year. And the main theme of, of our strategy is uh, sustainable growth from bioeconomy. And we had, did a lot of work uh, trying to define what bioeconomy is, and, and I think this picture shows very uh, exactly what it could be and what it probably also is. Bioeconomy is the next wave of the global economy. And then we are now in a transformation from a fossil-based 
economy in the world to a bio-based and bio-economy based. I think this is the best definition and, and the, the clearest of all definitions. Uh, the value chains that bioeconomy monitors is defined in our strategy as this six. And uh, in bioeconomy, uh, we monitor the whole value chains from the biomass source to the consumer products and, and services. And, and sustainability, resource efficiency, recycling and circular economy is, is really put in also in this, uh, you could call it a bioeconomy ecosystem. Bioeconomy is already really important to Finland. One or out of four export euros are already coming from, from bioeconomy. And the uh, total turnover is about 60 billion euros yearly. And now we seek to increase this output to 100 billion by 2025 and also to create 100,000 new jobs. And uh, you could say that uh, about half of uh, the Finnish bioeconomy is forest based. And in this sector, I think we are some kind of a leader worldwide. And we have the possibility to, to differentiate because of, of our forest resources. Here you can see the, the development of, of our forest resources in, in, in several de decades. And in 50 years, we have almost been able to double the volume of our forest in Finland. And uh, we have a great potential for both economical and also immaterial use of forests. And the long tradition of sustainable forest management has helped us to find, I would dare to say, a balance between economical and ecological values here in our forestry. There is also a typical landscape from Finland. A lot of forests, some lakes and some agricultural fields. Um, we have also been able to, to combine different uh, industries. Here we have some examples. We have a biodiesel production in place that is combined with pulp production. We have biogas, bioethanol from residues combined with pulp and solvent production. We have bi bio oil from forest residues combined with heat and power production. And we have also been able to combine uh, wood, the wood industry with the construction industry. And we have been able to, to create innovative urban construction based on wood. Almost 90% of single family houses in Finland are already built in wood and and next year we will be on a level of 10% in uh, multi-story houses that are wood framed. So then a few year, words about uh, the bioeconomy process and the vision and the strategic goals of our uh, strategy. The strategy work uh, involved several ministries and also uh, other organizations from, from the public sector, but a lot of organizations and, and uh, companies from the private sector. So we had all the stakeholders at the same table discussing in, in several workshops. 
about the Finnish bioeconomy. And uh, the strength we found in our work was uh, that we have uh, the natural resources, we have the know-how and the industrial platform to build on, and therefore we believe that we are able to to increase the output from from our bioeconomy in a really sustainable way. Uh, we found four strategic goals defined, and the action plan included in the strategy has um, 15 strategic actions and uh, almost 40 uh, act measures to be done. And uh, we have already started the implementation uh, at the same time we published our strategy, our government made a decision uh, that uh, bioeconomy is a key priority of Finland's growth. This is a really uh, important platform for our bioeconomy. And at the same time also the government allocated resources uh, to develop the bioeconomy for uh, research and development, for uh, public equity, equity funding, for uh, export credits, for uh, promotion of exports, as examples. And we started also what we call an international biorefinery competition. Uh, to accelerate the, the commercialization and to boost investments, uh, bioeconomy investments. And in this competition, uh, focus is on first of its kind investments. So we really now try to, to, to uh, have new investments in Finland in, in bioeconomy, producing new kind of bio based products. We have also prepared a lot of material because it's really important to communicate our bioeconomy. And uh, I have with me one example of this kind of materials. This is a bioeconomy uh, brief briefcase. And uh, this <coughs> we have delivered to all decision makers, you could say, and, and all Finnish ambassadors around the world. So if you see a person walking at the street with this kind of a briefcase, then it's a Finnish ambassador. <laughs> uh, it includes uh, about 20 different kind of uh, examples of uh, uh, dif different uh, biomaterials that already are produced in Finland. So it's really interesting inside also. Um, we have also started a project for uh, uh, removing bottlenecks in, in the regulatory field and also to find a new kind of uh, incentives in the bioeconomy field. And uh, the actions uh, is uh, coordinated by what we call a strategic program set by the government. So we have a high level decision and we have a, a program uh, that uh, working under the government uh, implementing the strategy. And we are also uh, uh, trying to, to, to start a panel, a bioeconomy panel, uh, before the end of, of this year. So uh, this is an example of what our uh, government have decided. This is from uh, our program of, of our government. And then, then we have funding. This is a decision made in 
September of our, our uh, government concerning Finnish industry investments, share capital. And uh, this is uh, about the, the competition I mentioned. But we have also uh, tried to define the, the key priorities from our point of view concerning the EU. And uh, uh, our opinion is first that uh, we need a shared bioeconomic vision in the EU upon which we can build a favorable and predictable environment for a competitive and growing uh, bio-based or bio-economy industry. Secondly, de secondly, we need more demand for our products. And uh, first, it's really important to have a le level playing field for st sustainable products. And we also need to uh, influence on, on custom customer choices and therefore the, the, the communication is really important. Mm. People, people's awareness of, of the important importance of, of uh, bio-based, using bio-based products uh, isn't too good today. So, so we have really to, to inform people about the growing bioeconomy. Concerning research, development and, and innovation, we think that Horizon 2020 is a go good uh, base to build on, uh, but we also need um, new innovative and inspiring financing instruments in, in the EU. And, for, and uh, like for example, this uh, Finnish international biorefining competition I mentioned this kind of new inspiring instruments. And we also uh, have to ensure the common acceptability of using uh, biomass. We have to have a broad political and public support of sustainable use of renewable resources. And uh, Too often we see use of biomass or use of natural resources as a problem, but if it's on a really on a sustainable basis, there should be no problems. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, Finland can not alone change the uh, world to where, towards a bioeconomy. We need partners, and therefore. If you are uh, looking for a partner, please ask a fin. And uh, to summarize my presentation and the main message from, from our strategy, I would like to end my presentation by showing a short video. So let's see if this is working now. Okay, no sounds.
So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your attention. And plenty of new jobs for uh, uh, orchestras as well in Finland. Um, <clears throat> I'm not going to exercise the privilege to, as moderator to, to open up the discussion. I'd rather you do that. Um, we have of the order of 15 minutes or so. Um, one thing, one thing I'd, I'd like to just say, though, is that uh, in all of this, um, when, we, when we think about coherence, we're, we're going to see... The same, the same things in all countries. And, we, and for example, uh, Blanche, you mentioned this, uh, the 5% bioeconomy, but it looks like for, uh, in, in Finland potentially more. I think, well, I think one of the things we need in the coherence thing is to decide what is going to be enough. Yeah, it, you know, 5% by 2050 will probably be drowning in crude oil and being greatly overheated by then if we're, if we're only reaching 5%. That would be something I'd like if we don't get a big response from the audience, is, uh, is to think about you know, exactly... We, we often stare at 2030 and 2050 and wonder what on earth is going to be happening. And um, I, I would like to think that it would be globally much higher than 5% by then. But I, I'll open it up to the floor for uh, for any comments and questions that you might have. Achim. Yes, Achim Bönke, DG Enterprise, European Commission, Brussels. Um, I have two questions for clarification, Mr. Chairman, if this is still possible to the last presenter. Um, the first one um, is about regulatory bottlenecks removal programs. If uh, you could be a bit more specific, it would be very useful. Then you talked about create demand for bio-based products, and there you talked about a level playing field is needed for what? For bio-based products versus other products, favoritism, bio-based products versus other products, or what do you mean? Could you repeat the first one? Yeah, the first one is about, uh, you talked about regulatory bottlenecks removal and the program. So what would be interesting to know, where do you see regulatory bottlenecks, uh, in which field, and uh, what do you uh, understand as a program and how to remove them? Yes. Um, as I mentioned, we have started a project concerning our national regulations. And um, it's uh, really in the beginning, so I cannot refer to any results yet. But, but we are trying to, to go through the, the most essential uh, regulations and, and try to find uh, and try also to, to discuss with the, with the, with the industries and, uh, and other stakeholders how these, they see the, the regulations. Are they... Are there bottlenecks or, or are there uh, incentives enough for developing the, the bioeconomy? And uh, I hope also that uh, this kind of uh, exercise could be done also in, in, in the EU to try to, to find, go into the, to the regulations and try to find the bottlenecks. Um, about the, the, the demand, uh, I try to emphasize that uh, communication is really important. And, and, and I believe a lot can be done by communication. And, and also in EU we have to have a, a broad discussion amongst the, the decision makers, but also in public of the advantages of bioeconomy. That is, that is the, the most important thing. Then we know that uh, many industries are very strong and uh, in many aspects uh, uh, regulations are uh, from a status quo situation and uh, now when we are 
trying to to build up on demand. Uh, I, I think we we need also to to look at at the whole and and see if we are uh, playing the same game as the others here in in bioeconomy, or do we have to to play another kind of game? Thank you. Um, Sylvia Nemeth, European Commission, Bioeconomy Directorate. Um, a question to each of the speakers um, about um, South Africa. Um, how do you see the added value of having uh, a bioeconomy strategy? Uh, your presentation gave examples of how it can pull uh, better and focus uh, public resources. But I guess there is uh, there are advantages also in uh, the minds of people, in the minds of consumers. So I'm interested in your view on that. Um, and to the Finnish speaker, you mentioned uh, the international uh, biorefinery um, uh, competition. If you could elaborate a bit on that, uh, how international that was. Thank you. Um, thank you for your question. Um, in terms of added value, um, I would have to say that, you know, if you can break it down to those three thematic areas, if I have to say in terms of industry, the bio-based economy is something that wasn't really touched in the biotech strategy previously in 2002. So a lot of the emphasis in terms of this strategy, I, I believe in terms of value, the bio-based economy is something that's still in ascendancy in South Africa. It's not fully understood, re really, but I think it has a role to play in terms of what Jim was saying to displace fossil fuels. In South Africa, we have lots of coal that we use for our um, liquid fuels, for our electricity, and we're a very uh, carbon-intensive economy. Um, we have a high footprint, actually the, one of the highest in Africa and it rivals developed countries. So we really hope that this bio-based economy can be able to have a contribution to the green economy as well as environmental sustainability. We also have lots of waste, as I said before. So in terms of value in, on the industry side, you know, we want to be able to have this address the climate change discourse as well. In terms of the health section, it's, it's a big component in all over the world. Biotech is often focused on, on the health section and that's really a development objective that we have in, in the country in terms of health. So, as I said before, a big part of our trade deficit is importing APIs, which is what we use for ARVs. And we want to be able to reduce the dependency of imports to that. So, in terms of value add, we're hoping we can be able to, uh, you know, grow our own capabilities to, to um, produce ARVs. We have, uh, I think, at, at the moment, two million people that's um, dependent on ARVs. It's a huge in terms of budget, and it, we probably it's probably going to increase as well. So we we don't want to, we want to have some sort of independence <coughs> in this, and the critical rollout of ARVs is also a, a quite a big thing in, in government as well. And about the the our international biorefinery competition. Uh, we launched this uh, competition in May this year, and uh, uh, the, uh, uh, deadline for proposals is uh, on 4th of December, so we have, haven't the results yet. But uh, I can tell you that uh, uh, there have been interests Interesting uh, um, contacts from all over the world. So it is international. And uh, as I said, uh, our government has made a decision that uh, bioeconomy is one of the growth areas for the Finnish economy. So we have the, the base to stay on, and we have also allocated resources, public resources. But we try now to to accelerate the, the investments and also to attract private investors, also international investors. 
uh, and uh, the specifications uh, roughly said is that uh, the uh, investment should be located somewhere in Finland and uh, that uh, uh, should it include technology that has not yet been in commercial use and uh, and that it the uh, proposals uh, should not uh, have uh, received any public money yet and uh, it should be eligible for public funding so these are the, the specifications roughly and, but we have also uh, more uh, the detailed rules made so Um, yeah, I have a question to uh, Blanche. You mentioned uh, mining. <coughs> mining is um, uh, affects uh, land use very much. There are many examples uh, all over the world. Uh, bauxite mining or gold mining has a, a, a disastrous impact on land use. <coughs> there are also examples, <coughs> for instance, in, Ch in China, uh, where there are now good experiences where um, uh, after short-term mining, uh, after five years, the farm, uh, the the original farmers, they are better off by getting new and improved land. Uh, the soil returning to the to the place. So um, my first question is, what is the experience with mining in South Africa? Um, and the second um, uh, question is, uh, can um, European importance do something uh, to um, uh, to avoid any problems with mining or to make it? a little bit less unsustainable. Um, thank you. Uh, can I just uh, clarify your question? So what is our experience in biotech on mining? Is that? What is, what is your, so mining has a an, has an big impact on land use. And um, um, there are uh, examples that Lands are uh, destroyed or devastated because of um, mining, and that's not good for um, uh, biodiversity, not good for uh, original farmers, and, and so on. So my question is, um, what is your experience uh, with mining in South Africa? Is it all negative, or are there also good examples uh, where farmers uh, have, after a few years of mining, their land, land in an improved status uh, back? such as is the case in, in China. So, okay. um, all right, so um, I would have to say in terms of mining experience, <coughs> there is a lot of work in terms of reha rehabilitation of those lands. But at, at the moment, from what I understand, we have a science council called uh, MinTech, which is Mineral Technology um, of South Africa. And actually it's a world um, quite known process, bioleaching. So in, in terms of that, in terms of the biotech aspect, we, we're quite a world leader in terms of bioleaching. Um, bio but in terms of rehabilitation of land, I, I don't, I'm not aware of, of something that is as successful as in China. Um, I'm, when I say in terms of mining and biotech, I'm looking at more at the processes. At, in, in terms of the impact of land, this is something that we, we haven't thought of yet. Um, there is a lot of impact in terms of what we call the acid mine drainage, the AMD, which is causing a lot of problems. So in the surrounding areas, the impact of the acid mine is, is going to be a quite a big role in terms of, of, this, of this strategy. But in terms of rehabilitation of land and impact, we, we haven't thought about that yet. Thank you. My name is Michael Garros from Nova Institute, Germany. I have a question to the Finnish strategy. Um, I, I really like the Finnish uh, roadmap. In fact, it's the best I ever saw uh, compared to other countries, especially this focus on uh, high-value application. Um, but I have two questions. One is, um, after the bioeconomy strategy was launched, two or three weeks later, I read in the press that uh, the Finnish government is supporting UPM biodiesel by 1.5 billion uh, euro. This is a little bit of contrast to the target of the new bioeconomy strategy. 
That was one question. Or there was a calculation, uh, if the target of the Finnish government uh, should be fulfilled, then that would mean over a few years uh, 1.5 billion for the biodiesel. So this is a question how this biofuel strategy fits to the new bioeconomy strategy. And the second question is, um, do you also have a focus on cellulose fiber for textile industry? Um, in our last study, we saw a gap in textile fibers by 180 million tons till 2050. And we see investment from Indian companies in Sweden. So it seems for me that the cellulose fiber, textile fiber area is a little bit forgotten in the past. Is this now also a focus in your new strategy? Uh, concerning uh, the investment uh, in um, bio diesel production of UPM, they haven't got any uh, public money for that investment. Uh, but uh, of course, uh, a lot of money have been put into research and development in this area for several several years. If I have Remember the, the, the numbers, right? Uh, Tekes, for example, uh, that are funding uh, research and development in Finland, uh, uh, spent about uh, 160 million euros last year. And this has gone on for several years. So, But now we will be on the stage, hopefully, soon when we have new products coming. And... and uh, Actually, we have some already as, as uh, one good example is the bio oil production uh, by, by uh, Fortum, that is an energy company, and also this by, by uh, UPM, and also Metze Group has biogas production. And we have also pro um, projects ongoing uh, for uh, um, refining lignin uh, for uh, uh, biomaterial use. Uh, so what I want to say is that we have had a very focused paper industry in the past, but now we will have a very differ different bioeconomy industry with the core in the, the, the forest industry. But the forest industry is, is changing quite a lot also. The forest industry is going uh, are in a transformation from a paper industry to a the bioeconomy industry. And uh, textile fibers, um, I, I believe strongly in textile fibers. And, uh, and uh, we have one old, uh, or oh, it isn't so old, but one former uh, pulp line, uh, pulp line uh, that have produced uh, short fiber pulp in the past, and now it, uh, the line is producing textile fiber, and the export value of that last year was about 100 million euros. Um, nobody's coming in after us, so we can keep on going if you, if you, if you wish. Okay, my name is Mess Wolf. I'm from the Nordic Council of Ministers. And since uh, the time is getting close to six, I'll, instead of m making a question, I'll just make a short comment. Um, I think this uh, discussion on uh, how to develop coherent policy, public policies are very important. And I think we have seen some good examples uh, today on, on how to do it. But still, I think we need to discover it uh, even further. And, and uh, I was inspired by the video where one of the, the words were that we will see a renaissance of the local economy. And that leads to my comment. I think then we need also to look in policy coherence on a multi-level uh, governance perspective. Because I think the, the bioeconomy discussion is very often just taking place in capitals or in bigger cities like in Torino. But it is very uh, rare taking place in local municipality, uh, city councils and so on. I think we need to develop strategies on multi-level governance for the bioeconomy. Otherwise, I think we'll have difficulties in reaching the full potential of the bioeconomy. So, just a comment on that. I'd actually like to come in a bit on that as well, because I, during the summer I was uh, up in York for the start of the Tour de France, but it was a, it was a memorandum of understanding between France and, and the UK uh, and Yorkshire, 
is in is a is a large region which is been deindustrialized, got lots of problems, and 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 it's at at once when you start to mention these possibilities, then people are already, especially there's a, lot, a large farming community, people start to get enthusiastic about it. But I think you're absolutely right. It's, um, you spend too much time in capitals and not enough time out there. And after all, it's a farm. If, if the farmers don't want this, then it's going to be very difficult to make it work. And, and another final point on the... Uh, because you're Nordic and we're talking Finland. Uh, earlier in the year, I was up uh, at a bioeconomy meeting in, in, uh, in Sweden and... There were big success stories from all those Nordic countries. And one question was asked, how come we never hear about you in Brussels? And they said, there's some problem in Nordic countries about bragging. And I think that's the, that comes back to the communication, is the more of that communication you can do, then you'll get the public's buy-in and probably make the coherence in public policy easier. My name is Josef Klöstl from Bok University in Vienna, Austria. I have a question concerning the Finnish strategy. Uh, so we are in the process in Austria in, 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 uh, also to, to develop a national strategy. Therefore, I would be interested to know from you what we are, uh, which, which main challenges did you experience in, in the development of the strategy? For example, resistance from stakeholders, from the public, or from some parts of the government or so. So did you, could you make a brief comment on this? And the other question would be, uh, so you mentioned that you have new funding allocated to buy economy. So is it uh, new money for research primarily? Is it fresh money or is it a reallocation of budget from other sectors? Thank, thank you for, for a good question. Um, um, uh, as I said, we, we, we had a lot of discussions concerning the definition of, of uh, bioeconomy. And uh, I think uh, all of us have had a, a very uh, different picture of bioeconomy when we came to the uh, strategy process uh, workshop, the first one. But uh, after a while, I, I, I saw that we find the clue uh, we, we, we've somehow uh, we, we started to talk in the same language and I, I think it's very important to to take the time in the beginning to def define certain things or, or discuss uh, such issues uh, where you have some kind of different uh, angles. Uh, but then uh, later on, I would say that, that the, the, the work was, was very uh, intensive. And uh, we have also on a personal level been able to, to make new kind of uh, uh, networks. So um, this has been a very, very good process in a whole and as, as a small joke I can say that uh, the, the, the difficult thing was that uh, when we came up with different uh, versions of our strategy our minister raised the ribbon every time a little bit higher so we have to do a better work all the time so and 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 therefore I think also that that is one reason why we have a quite a good good uh, strategy. We had um, a chairman of the, the steering group that was very demanding. That was good. Um, reallocation, uh, yes. As you all know, the Finnish economy is not this, uh, in a very good shape today and, and, and it's, uh, it's, it's about reallocation of, of, of uh, resources. No more money as a whole, but reallocated to, to bioeconomy, to um, clean tech, and digital businesses. Those are the three uh, focus areas of, of our government. Uh, it looks like we're coming to the end of it, and uh, I don't see any more hands raised. 
and we're beyond six o'clock, so I'm going to keep this very brief and, and, and stick with one final hobby horse, I guess, about uh, cohesion of public policies. Um, this man at the front here was one of the first to talk to me about the level playing field problems between fuels, chemicals, plastics, materials, which is existing and is in Europe. And you can take that theoretically, but when I start to hear of furniture companies having difficulty sourcing wood because it's been burned in power stations, then you can see we need policy coherence. I'll end on that.